We are in our white coats and we're heading down to the patient as professor session. I'm heading over to my dental anatomy course, which is really exciting. And week after week, I gotta say it's getting a little bit easier to look at this cadaver and realize that they're a person. But it's fun. I'm excited. I'm getting to do more doctory things. Hey you guys, happy Monday. So I took last week off from vlogging uh, because A, uh, I didn't think that there was that much to show you guys, that much that was interesting for you guys to watch, and B, I was still kind of trying to get my footing. Even though it was already week three of dental school, um, I was kind of feeling overwhelmed and so I was just trying to figure everything out in terms of classes and material to study and all of that. So I think this week I'm a little bit more settled and can show you guys a little bit more of what I'm doing. Today um, I had a histology lecture this morning on Zoom. Uh, we had both lecture and lab, so that was about two, three hours. And now I'm headed over to anatomy lab, which is the cadaver day section. And week after week, I gotta say it's getting a little bit easier um, to look at this cadaver and realize that they're a person and we're working on them and understand that this is an amazing thing that we get to do. We started in the pectoral region and now we're pretty much getting up to the arm and the forearm and the hand and so it started out very kind of I guess simple. We didn't think that it was that simple but now that we're getting into the hand and the forearm those are just getting so complicated with the uh, muscles and the vasculature so that's going to be interesting. Um, I wish I could show you guys the cadaver but obviously I can't film in the lab but I can show you guys what we are studying at the moment. So in this video, I just wanted to take you guys through a little bit of how I've been figuring out how to study. Obviously, it's been a little bit of a transition versus studying in undergrad. I mean, our molecular mechanisms professor literally said that in the first day of class that we were going to have to rethink completely how we study for classes. And so for the purpose of most of our classes, there's so much material to memorize that you can't just obviously save studying for the last minute right before the exam, but also you can't just walk into lecture having a no background or general understanding of the material being covered. So what we have been recommended to do and what I've been trying to do is before any session that we have, I will review either the slides or the synopses for um, like the mechanisms that our professor writes, which are basically the notes for the class. And during the lecture, I really focus less on just writing down everything that the professor says and more so on just trying to understand everything that they're discussing uh, and being able to ask questions when I need to. Because the good thing is, is that all of our classes are uh, recorded and uploaded with video and audio footage uh, of everything that is going on during class. So even if you need to uh, replay something that you missed, you can always go back and just look at that recording. Um, and then also, I, when I'm physically in class, I will also use the Notability Record function, which is actually really helpful because it allows you to replay what you are writing in your notes uh, as the professor was saying something. So sometimes uh, I wrote something down and then it wasn't really clear, so I will just click on that recording and just go to the area of my notes. Uh, so I will just click on whatever I was writing at the moment and then it will take me to the point in the lecture recording where I wrote that down. spent today uh, dissecting the uh, forearm and the hand, uh, which was pretty interesting actually. I think this was one of the more um, interesting labs that we've done so far because uh, I wish I could actually show you guys, but um, 
we were looking at the musculature of the forearm uh, and what connects into the hand and there are actually tendons that you can literally identify and pull on and you can see the fingers like flex and extend which is uh, pretty cool to kind of see you know like a real world application for something that we're learning i think a lot of the other concepts that we've learned like in the shoulder the arm they, they kind of made sense but being able to see the fingers literally move when you would pull on one of these tendons was actually really interesting and really helped with memorizing all the different groups and names of the tendons um, so we did the anterior, which is the front part, and the posterior of the forearm. Um, and then we actually started the hand as well. And I think it's actually pretty interesting. I was saying this to my classmates that um, this is <laughs> this is probably going to be one of the most relevant um, sections that we do as dentists. Just because like, if your hand is cramping up from a day of drilling, you probably know exactly which tendon and which muscle is the one that's responsible for your cramps. Just or... another thing to note is that our schedule kind of differs week to week. Although we have our basic core of which lectures and which classes we have to have during the week, um, sometimes we have additional sessions that weren't out there the previous week. In other weeks, we will have fewer sessions and then when we have exams for each block. I don't know if I talked about this earlier, but we have blocks meaning our classes aren't structured in semesters, they're structured in blocks, which is about a month and a half each for per block. And then when you finish with the block one material, you move on to something completely different in block two and block three and so on. So in the fall, we actually have three blocks and the end of block one is coming up at the end of September. And then uh, for September, we actually have exam week where we will not have any classes. And then that will give us time because we get to choose what day of the week to take our exam on. And so we get to choose what day during exam week to take our exam. And then usually either Thursday or Friday, we'll, we will have an exam review session in each of the classes that we have to kind of go over the material, make sure no one's lagging behind. I get it, I get it. You want a snack too. One thing to know is that when you get a dog, you can never just eat by yourself. When you eat, the dog has to eat. Good morning, you guys. It is now Wednesday morning. Busy, busy day ahead of today. We've got a lot of different things going on. Um, so right now it's 9.30. I'm heading over to my dental anatomy course, which is really exciting. Um, so the first couple of weeks, we kind of started purely with medical school classes. So last week, we just finally started with more uh, dental school classes, which is really exciting and fun. I had a blast, uh, even though that sounds kind of weird. I had a blast last week, kind of, you know, using my dental assisting knowledge to use of all the teeth and the surfaces and all of that. Um, so that's where I'm heading to now. And then we actually have something very exciting today. So I have my white coat with me uh, because from like the mechanisms, which is more of like our disease and sort of like biochemistry slash cell biology class, we have a patient as professor session. Sorry, there was a truck making a lot of noise. What I was saying was we get to sit in on a session uh, between a doctor and their patient and we get to ask questions 
and just observe a doctor-patient interaction to learn more about professional etiquette along with an interesting case, which is amazing, but obviously can't film in there for the privacy of the patient, but still a very, very cool experience. Um, and then normally we have one anatomy lecture on Wednesdays, but since tomorrow is Yom Kippur, they actually moved uh, tomorrow's session also to today. So first we have dental anatomy for a couple of hours, then we have regular uh, clinical growth anatomy, and then we have a little bit of a break. Then we have our doctor as professor session, and then we have another uh, CGA uh, session. So relatively long day, but it's fun. I'm excited, getting to do more doctory things. Uh, you're looking at how long they are inside. You're getting really, you can see that not much of them is explored here. So this is a pretty normal and typical overlight. Okay, so that was dental anatomy. So now I uh, just grabbed a quick little bagel for lunch and I'm gonna head over to the vet and study a little bit for anatomy while I eat and then we'll head to uh, the next lecture which is in about 30 minutes. We are in our white coats and we're heading down to the patient as professor session. Um, it'll be in our lecture hall, but we'll get to observe an actual doctor patient interaction. There's Michelle over there. Say hello. I'll tag her Instagram right there. She's doing some great work over there. <laughs> All right. So obviously can't film in there, but we'll tell you guys about it. Okay, so um, on my way home now, since I last filmed, we had the patient as professor session and then another anatomy lecture. So the patient as professor session was really amazing and really informative and I really get to feel like, wow, I'm in medical school, like I'm gonna be a doctor wearing my white coat. But for HIPAA reasons, I can't disclose a lot of the information that was discussed. All I will say is that it was really interesting to get to see some of the real life implications of the uh, medications as well as the disorders that we're learning about um, you know how some of the molecular mechanisms that we learn about and how they're formulated into drugs that have helped this patient who has been suffering from a, a, not suffering I would say experiencing type 2 diabetes for nearly three decades um, so that was a really interesting experience. I learned a lot and it definitely helps to reinforce the material in my head because, you know, you don't think about drug that is a sulfonylurea GLP-1 or a GLT-2 repressor uh, as affecting an actual person until you see someone who has actually taken these medications and some of which have caused devastating side effects and others of which have dramatically improved his life. Um, so that was amazing. Um, and I wish I could really show you guys more, but it was really informative. I hope that we get to see a lot more cases like this in the future because it really kind of puts a face to what we're learning about, which is what being a doctor is all about. Hey guys, so it is 10 a.m. on a Saturday and guess where I'm heading? <laughs> to the anatomy lab because we have exams coming up in just about a week and a half and my dissection group decided to come in after hours. Uh, the cool thing is that we have access to the cadaver lab 24 seven, so we decided to come in on a Saturday just to kind of review the structures because we don't get to do every single dissection in a row. We kind of get to do them in parts of the medical students. So we just wanna supplement and add in anything that we might have missed through the dissections that other groups were doing and just go over everything that we know, spend a little bit of time, uh, and we're really lucky that we get to be able to do this. 
and actually see uh, the structures as opposed to seeing it on a model but on the actual cadaver which will be used in our practical in just about two weeks. So after a really hectic week, I decided to meet up with my friend for a dinner and we actually completely forgot uh, because the restaurant we were meeting at was on Mulberry Street uh, that San Gennaro had started. And for those of you who don't know, San Gennaro is this annual kind of Italian food feast uh, that happens uh, in Little Italy and stretches into Soho. There's my friend Lily. We were grabbing uh, some Vietnamese food. You guys should subscribe to her YouTube channel as well. She does weekly vlogs. Uh, but yeah, San Gennaro is really fun and always really a good time if you want some comfort food. Uh, it's every year around the end of September through the beginning of October, but the real reason why I come here every year is these bad boys. It's the caramel apples. I literally just have them once a year, um, and last year I couldn't get one, so this was a treat. Secured the goods. <laughs> 